it might actually be a little bit ridiculous how excited I get to play these old games, but this was another game I used to play as a kid for just hours on end. Cabela's Outdoor Adventures, I think it's 2006, but I actually don't see it anywhere in the title, so we're just going to call it Cabela's Outdoor Adventures, and we're going to go ahead and hop right in because it actually takes a while to get started, but we need to create a profile. We're actually going to go on Sportsman difficulty because I think that still gives you the mini-map. I want to be able to have that, but we'll just kind of get things created here and I know we gotta like buy weapons we gotta get specific weapons for specific hunts and side and everything so we'll probably kind of skip to having everything created so we've got our character now and I went ahead and bought our equipment as well because we have to go inside and again I want to save a little bit of time and the different areas basically have different rules if you go into the hunt screen you can read the rules and like for this first spot we gotta use only shotguns and blaze orange clothing may be required so we have the stuff that's gonna allow us to actually go on that hunt but we do need to go to the target range and sight in our shotgun. And I don't know if we can actually put the scope on it. Doesn't seem like you can go into your inventory here, so we might be kind of stuck with that. But we'll kind of see. I want to sight it in for, like, decent range, especially since we're on sportsman's difficulty. I think it might be important to be able to take longer shots, but you can't really see. So we'll kind of just start at that. I mean, that hit pretty much dead center. Now, I wonder if it's going to be like Alaskan Adventures. I haven't played this game in long enough to remember, but the bullet drop is quite severe. I'm just going to bring that up so we can quickly get a look. Yeah, it's starting to drop a little bit, and I mean, we're only shooting at 20 yards, so we'll just kind of increase the elevation a good bit and just see where it hits towards the back of the range there. I mean, that's as far as I can get the target back. And the question is... How high above the bullseye did that hit? That's actually probably where I want it. That last shot right there at the top is where we hit, so I think we're going to go with that. I really can't remember how close you can get to animals. That's going to be a bit of a learning process, but uh, how do I... I assume quit is what I want? Maybe not. How do I get out of here? Oh, okay. You just got to walk towards the door, so I'm glad I did that. We'll actually save, and then we'll go ahead and get into our first hunt, which... I don't know if I'm going to spawn mash it or not, um, you'll see why in a minute, but basically we'll go ahead and start this and I don't know, I might have to skip through the, uh, the little stories, I don't know if there's like copyrighted music, we'll have to see. You've got a buck in your sights, get ready to take your shot, hurry up or he may bolt. Fire! That Here actually is not bad. Now obviously that one's kind of programmed to just kind of hang there, but Sometimes you end up with a really tiny buck to start with, and you could just like spawn mash it over and over till it gets huge, because they do get bigger with like drop tines and stuff, but we won't go too crazy. Now, we started this in high. Let's see what you got. That worked pretty good for that. Now most of the game's not gonna be nearly that easy, but how do we just gotta press E? Chest shot, so not bad. It was a non-typical even. So actually we got a pretty good one. 13 point with a 169 score like I know there's a rack that has like these huge double drop times and stuff but I didn't want to go too crazy and like spawn mash but that's what I used to do as a kid I would just spawn it over and over there is one this animal trophy can go back to deer country for sure in this playthrough that we're gonna do it with eventually we're gonna get to an albino mule deer in the desert and it's one of the reasons that I really want call the wild to get a uh, desert mule deer at some point like this game is what got me wanting that but yeah, that one, that one we're going to spawn mash till we get a really big one, but I think for the most part we don't want to do that. But, I don't remember how exactly this game works. I think the purple might be big game, but we have two white tail tags, so the next one's not going to be quite so easy to fill. Hey, word is there's a nice elk roam in the area. Want to go after him? I forgot these little things were in the game. I mean, yeah. Okay, purple is not big game. So maybe green is game animals? Then the question is, how on earth do I find an elk? I wonder if there's, like, information somewhere. Find and take down the rare Rocky Mountain elk spotted by your guide. Is it on the map, maybe? No. And then the other thing is, I have this shotgun scope. Apparently I can't equip that. Alright, so... Oh wait, there's an orange one over there. I actually have no idea. This is going to be a little bit of a learning process, but I kind of, I'm liking this already. Some of the stuff with the minimap is a lot more like crisp, I feel like, than Alaska Adventures was, so 
it's good to feel like we're actually kind of moving through time in the right direction. Well, this will be good information. Orange dots are deer, green dots are big game, and violet dots are small games. So, I'm going to guess, because there's a lot of the green dots, some of them are probably like black bear or something. But, one of them should be the elk. And I will readily admit that I never killed this elk as a kid. I do remember that being a mission, but I kind of want to see if we can get him. Okay, that's got to be our elk. I'm not sure he seems to be a little bit confused about where to go. Ooh. Did he just completely tumble there? I am quite surprised we made that shot. I gotta think this is the only elk on the map. I hope so. I hope we couldn't have had like, an opportunity to bigger one, but the way they made it sound, there should have only been one. Score was 712. That one's a typical, and there is a trophy lodge in this game as well. We hit him in the neck, which... Depending on where in the neck, that actually could have made sense. Score. But we still have a deer tag to find. And there were missions like that in Alaskan Adventures where, like, I'd get a random, like, lead on something to go do in the game. And I didn't do many of those. I'm hoping to do them in this game because I'm really not certain there is, like, 100% completion in this game. But that, I think, is what cost us 100% completion in Alaskan Adventures. And if there is a chance to complete the game 100%, I'd like to actually do it. This is the closest I've gotten to this buck. I think he was about to spook. And it's been literally like 30 minutes of chasing him. So I know the next hunt we're getting like collars and binoculars and stuff. But this is a really big buck. I think it's bigger than what we just killed. If I'm not mistaken, he is another non-typical. Drop times. I don't know what the difference is. But this guy is 89 total? He's a 24 point, apparently, which, if I'm not mistaken, is the specific thing that I would like spawn match for that I was talking about at the beginning. I'm not exactly sure how 312 is the total length of the points, but his total is 89 either way. Let's see if that counts for a high score first. Time to move on to the next season. I guess not. I'm kind of curious how, but we unlocked an elk call. I think these skills increased. We got some cash rewards, but... Uh, yeah, I definitely need to look at other equipment like binoculars and stuff before we get into the next hunt, but that's going to be winter in Washington County. We'll look at the rules again. We can use rifles this time, that'll help us. Tags are one buck and one doe, and we're going to probably need blaze orange. So, we're going to get a rifle and a scope, we're going to sight that in, and hopefully we have less struggles this time getting close to deer, because that took forever. I think we should be getting pretty close with this 270. It was the most expensive gun in the store, and I just figure that probably means it's going to be the best. And with a little bit of tweaking, yeah, we're just high on the bullseye at 50, which is probably how I want to keep it. I think we're going to get plenty of shots beyond 50, and it seems to be pretty flat shooting, so we're going to go with that. And we're going to get to do a little bit of hunting in some snow, which potentially that could be interesting. We should be able to see stuff further away. So clearly I should have got the binoculars on the first hunt, but that seems to be a good enough buck to fill our tag on, so I think if we can get that lined up, we can't zoom in with the scope. Let's see what you got. They really <laughs> get hit hard when you shoot them. They really just kinda ragdoll, but I wanted to get in this little tower and kinda overlook the uh the cornfield here. But I guess we're just filling our buck tag first. I don't know if there's any, like, side missions, but that elk happens to be way bigger than what we shot, so if there are, hopefully it's for another elk. And that is another buck pretty much the same size. So, not sure where the does are, haven't seen any of them yet, but that's the only tag we have remaining unless some kind of side mission comes up. And this is just a typical. We actually hit him, apparently, a little bit back, but that worked. And he is 168 total score, 12 point, which I think is one smaller than like the deer we started with. But yeah, the binoculars make a huge difference. And when we have to use the rifle, I don't think we need the collars. I did get a crunk call and stuff, but honestly, like however far that was, I didn't look. I'm not sure if it does say how far you shot. That was no problem. I don't really get how a doe tag is more difficult to fill than a buck tag. Like I just keep seeing pretty decent bucks walking around, but I do think, yeah, finally, We've got a doe hanging out back there. So, 
We'll get the 270, and I mean, I can't really know how far that is. It's pretty far. Might have to aim a little high. Not sure if we even needed to, but I mean, that's going to be definitely, like, good to have then. Because I'll look and see if it actually says the range, but that had to be closer to, like, 100 yards, and it looked like I hit pretty much dead on. Honestly, the deer models in this game are not bad. I'm pretty sure this game is like 15 years old still, but anyway. Right front legs, we were low. 109 yards. Honestly, that 270 is going to be really useful to have. I don't know, like, there's obviously going to be hunts where we got to use something else, but we might kind of stick with this as our main weapon Great throughout. Job. You've completed this location. So that gets us a muzzleloader, which I think we might have to use going forward here. I'm not sure. And yeah, we are going into the Henry Mountains, so... At least by the looks of it, there's going to be like 22 total hunts. So we'll try to do three a video and have about seven videos in this game. So I guess we need to read the rules here. Use only bows. That doesn't necessarily sound fun. It's going to be one buck and one doe mule deer. So then we definitely are going to need to get mule deer calls. I did get the grunt color. Difficult to choose? I'm here to help. But... I think there's like a mule deer lure, which is like scent. Scent cover is probably gonna be good. What they need. Mule buck lure? Thank you. I hope it works out well. I don't know if they're like a one use thing. They're only twenty credits. And then like I've got the grunt call. Excellent choice. We'll just kind of get all kinds of stuff. And there are decoys here too. I don't think we're gonna go that far. But we do need a bow. So we might need to sell something back. The only option is a recurve, but I think it's still going to give us that, like, aiming reticle. Made a good choice. So that shouldn't be too bad, but I'm curious to see how this is going to go. This should be quite interesting, because I thought we could just go to the target range and sight in the recurve for, like, a farther distance, and that would really help us out, but there's actually no archery part of the target range. I tried to go and it just wouldn't even let us in. So we're stuck with whatever the recurve sighted in for, and, like, we have the aiming reticle there. It's not going to be an accuracy thing, I just don't know There's how close... There's a deer out there that needs to be brought in. Go and take it down before it infects any of the other herd. Alright, well, that was quick. But I don't know how close we have to get, like, to actually have a decent chance at hitting them. And that's going to come down to calling, and we haven't gotten to see how good that works, but... Did it really give us a 9-hour time limit? I hope we can get it done in 9 hours. If not, probably shouldn't continue this playthrough. So, I'm pretty sure... That is our sick deer. And, I mean, we don't have a rangefinder. But, like, let's just try that. It's a little bit low, so we're going to want to be even closer than that. I mean, we didn't stock to even close to that for the whitetail. Let's see what you got. I feel like even that was a little bit low. So, like, we can aim high and kind of deal with that a bit. But, I don't know. That was left front leg. We can see sort of where it impacted there, so... Kind of towards the top of the back might be a good idea. But, yeah, like, I didn't get anywhere near that close to Whitetail, so it's going to be kind of calling them in and seeing how close they'll get. I've kind of just taken to sneaking around, because I can't get eyes on these things without spooking them, but I sort of accidentally got close to this one, but there's a hill in the way. So I'm trying to get to where I can maybe see it, without actually spooking it, because that's all that's happened so far. But of course, there's just like a perfect amount of brush. I don't know if it's maybe bedded, because I know they do that. It might just be kind of hidden back there. Yeah, I can see it's actually a doe, which if we can get that doe tag filled, that would be nice. I'm just not sure, maybe if we sneak around like behind her here? Because I don't think we're getting much closer without spooking her just from, like, what I've seen so far. Actually, right through there, she's not far. Maybe we can get that shot. I want to keep it, like, right at the top of her back so we have, like, some room for arrow drop. I don't know, like... Nice looking trophy. I was afraid she'd spook when she stood up, so we'll take that. And by the way, these purple ones are bobcats. And I know they will go aggressive. Usually they spook, but... Sometimes they'll attack you, and to my memory, you can't really fend that off very well. So, we get our doe tag filled. That was a 30-yard shot, and it dropped pretty good. So, 
Much further than that, we'd have to aim pretty high, I think. But on the other map, anyway... Congratulations! It's a new high score! That was actually the difficult tag to fill, so... Hopefully we can just get through the buck tag and, uh, finish this hunt. I literally thought that was a part of the bush. That is pretty much exactly what I talked about at the beginning of the video, like, where I used to spawn mash to get the, uh, the albino mule deer to have, like, the huge antlers. That, I think, is the rack that I used to spawn mash for, so that's gotta be, like, about as big as these get. And I don't know, like, if they're gonna respond to the call. Like, when we chose the sportsman difficulty, it said that, like, the calling isn't as effective or something. So I don't know what to expect out of him. Especially the fact that he's bigger, like, it's probably less likely he'll come in. But being in a position where we can't see him, there's a bobcat walking over there too, which I don't love. But I don't see him. I don't know if he stopped. You probably wouldn't see that in real life with him right by the bobcat, but that is actually pretty cool. He's pretty similar to the, like the non-tips in Classic. But before he gets much closer and like spooks or something, let's see if we can get him. Nice. So, the only thing is making sure we get there before the bobcat gets to us. It's actually going to run off. So, after a lot of trial and error, we shot him apparently in the head. But we got Drop Tines, Rocky Mountain, Mule Deer Bucks. So, that's probably got to be like the biggest then. Because we had Non Typical and Drop Tines for Whitetail. He's a 10 by 10, 360 total score. That's actually really cool. This one goes on the high scores list. Yeah, that should beat the dough by just a bit, so... Season's over. Good work. We get to head back then. And that's going to be the last hunt from this video, because that was the third one now. And we unlocked a compact scope, so that might actually have some, like, zoom capabilities. The other one was fixed power. And what I want to do is go and take a look at the trophy lodge. So that is our drop time buck. You can barely see it. There's a little bit of a drop time there. I think there is a bigger rack for whitetail. Or actually, that is the non-typical. I think that's the first one we shot, like right at the beginning there. So then our drop time one's gotta be somewhere. That's the Rocky Mountain Elk, which I think we could have done better on. I thought there was only like one on the entire map. It was the way they made it seem, but I saw others like as we did the second hunt. That's not our drop time. That's the typical. He was the 168. That's the doe. That's gonna be the drop time one. And I think that is the rack that I actually used to go for because it's got like the big, thick drop times. I don't know if we can zoom in at all. It doesn't seem like it. But yeah, that was the, the drop time, like 24 points. So, honestly, I thought the drop times were further out, but maybe that was the one. And then we can go up to the next level. We got our Mjolnir doe. And is that the best look we're going to have at our huge, uh, not typical there? He's kind of, unfortunately, well hidden. 10 by 10 with a recurve. Honestly, still, that's pretty cool. I wish we could, like, walk around it or see it better, but I like to have it, like, jump in the fence there. It's pretty cool, like, I like the trophy lodge, like, the layout's quite nice. It's just that if we could move around it and, like, get a better look at some of this stuff, it would be neat, but I really like kind of the setup they have, but anyway. We'll head back to the main menu here and make sure we save, but not a bad start. We got a lot of good-sized deer, and I'm getting the impression that we might not need to do, like, the spawn mashing for the albino mule deer, because everything we're seeing is good size, and I wonder if it's the, the difficulty setting, because it did say, like, something about the size of the animals as I was selecting, and I didn't pay too much attention, but we might just have, like, a lot of good-sized stuff, and I like how Outdoor Adventures kind of focuses on deer a bit more than, like, Alaskan Adventures, because that's, you know, more like what I hunt here and seeing all the big ones is actually pretty cool, but we'll see what the game has in store for us in the next couple of videos. But anyway, thank you guys for watching and I'll see you next time.